Hey everybody out there, how are you doing? We are live from Little Ferry, New Jersey. The winds are howling, the rains are coming, there's tornado warnings, and yet I'm still doing a live stream. Either I'm dedicated or crazy or a little bit of both. So good to see everybody there. Let's see who we have today. So we have we have Patty. Good to see you. And Roy, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the Sam. Oh, so the, so Roy, that storm went through. It's over now. It's it's us, huh? Or are you still having it? And Colette, good to see you. And John Deakman, how are you, sir? Mr. Leahy, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. And we also have. Dr. Steve, how's it going? How are you? Yes, I'm putting my best foot forward, doctor. Uh, you know, not letting anything stop me, unless something actually stops me. <laughs> you know, uh, but we're really going to uh, really try and take, uh, continue this live stream, even though nature does not want it to happen, or, you know, Wants to see how badly we want it, right? Uh, oh, clear coating the cars. That's so great. I love the work you do, uh, Patty. That's so fantastic. And there we go. And uh, Mr. Thomas Payne, how's it going? Has the storms reached you? Hey, Willie, how you doing, sir? Very good to see you. So my picture's a little dark, and I'm not sure why. It really shouldn't be that dark because I have all kinds of lighting and everything i'm just gonna move my microphone out of the way yeah so i'm not sure what exactly is occurring maybe it's the iso uh let's see if i change it over to a 800 right and then if i lower my my shutter that might be better and now what i can do is i could come here and calm down this and see but yeah, weird lighting situation today. I'm not sure what's happening. Usually everything's all good in the hood here. So I'm not sure exactly. Let me see if I could change, change my aperture. Maybe make it, yeah, that might be a little bit better. Yeah, changing the aperture a little bit. That might be something that could help. And I think this light right here is kind of throwing everything off, so just all over the place. But let's make the best of it today, everybody. Yeah, exactly, Doctor. I am getting some some glare here, but I'm not sure what is causing it from one week to the next. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different lens on, and let's see how that goes. So I'm going to put this lens on and see if that helps us. So one moment, guys. See if that makes things a little better. You never know. focus all right so now we turn it back on okay so let's see what we have here and I think this light is a little powerful let me see if I kill that light or maybe just kill this light sorry about this everybody we'll see if we can make this right, let's see. And bring this over. All right, so now if I come here and I add more light. Maybe a little more contrast. 
that's a little better and then I have to change the there we go that's a little better oh good so that's a little better now it looks like I'm radioactive so let me lower the uh, saturation there and let's see and what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and change the layout a little bit and so this way we don't we get this bigger so what I'm going to do is change the layout and then to the bottom and then from the sides we'll get rid of all the superfluous detail and then we can come over here and make this bigger there we go and it's a little grainy today so I'm not sure so bear with me guys I'm not sure it's like one of those technical days you know so it looks like I'm getting hey what's up nameless I'm gonna bring down this light so this should bring us more light here this floodlight I have bring it down Whoa. See how this goes. There we go. Okay, so let's see what that does. And now I could lower my Very weird. Yeah, I've been doing live streams for a long time and never had an issue such as this. This is weird, guys. Might actually be the camera, but I don't know. Let's see. Okay, and so we have this light. If I bring this light in, and then let's see if I can lower the aperture again. No, this light definitely has to go. Okay. And let's see if I bring in more of this light over here. That looks better. Okay, let's see. Hey Blue, how you doing? Good to see you. okay so there we go okay so today yeah definitely i definitely didn't realize that there was going to be this issue uh doctor because i haven't had it so i can add some more ambient light from above and that might do it it's just i don't feel i'm getting the contrast that i normally get and it seems like it's uh very smoky which is very weird, you know? And this is a DSLR, so that's what's really puzzling about the whole thing. And my ISO, I'm gonna change my ISO to uh, auto. Let's see what that does. Okay, that might help because maybe the camera knows something that I don't. So I'm gonna Lower the shutter speed now. Let's see if this. Let's see if this happens. If this does it. And we're just gonna have to bring the ISO up here. I think it's the ISO thing that's giving us issues. Okay, so I have ISO 800, and that's probably gonna be the best that I'm gonna get right now. So I do apologize. 
Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I, I agree. Definitely, doctor. Definitely, you get much better, much better solutions with the. Um, and then let's go here, and then I'll just try and lighten this up a little bit, add a little contrast. Okay, so. So this is what we have. I really do apologize. I'm not sure exactly what's occurring here, but uh, you know, with the storm and everything, it's sort of like Murphy's Law, isn't it? You know, it's kind of in effect right now. And so <laughs> tornado watches and everything. So it's a little crazy out there. And so uh, Dr. Steve, you stay safe because I don't know if you're getting any of these storms as well. Make sure you're home. Uh, yeah, exactly, right? Uh, Willie, we never had this issue before, so it's very strange. I'm not sure exactly. You know what it is also? That they did an update. So look how beautiful that camera is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something as well. I'm going to add a sauce. And let's see if I just add a video source, uh, which is the same camera, and see if it's... Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so I think the problem is with this. So I'm going to move this over, and you can see how much clearly, how much cl more clear that is. So let's see if that's it. They just did updates, and when they do updates, everything goes haywire. It really does. Okay, great. So let's make this bigger. Wow, what a difference, huh? That's like night and day and unbelievable difference there. So what I can do is I'm just going to make this smaller. Get rid of some of this superfluous information here. And then come in here. And then we'll come in on this side. And then we should be good. So I can just bring this over. That looks much better. Now we can actually come in and with the color. And now I just have to focus. Okay, I think this is the best we're going to get it today, so uh, I do uh, thank everyone for sticking with me and all this craziness. Let me get a picture of her so I can show everyone. Ah, uh, thank you, doctor. I appreciate that. Oh, so you had some flooding in the AM. Oh, thank God you're okay. That's for sure. Okay, so now we should be able to start doing some artwork, so... I'm going to bring in the picture of her. We're going to add a, the source. And it's going to be media. And of course, I have to find this. It'll be one, two, three. So this is our reference photo that we we're working with. As you can see, this uh, beautiful actress here. And so I'm excited. I'm excited you all are here. Hey, John, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you guys are great to help me and everything like that. Um, yeah, so Blue, you be careful too. I know you're up here and everything. So please make sure you're okay and, and safe and your loved ones are safe. Okay. All right. So now we always do. We always want to start with the light mixture. I'm going to bring in a picture from my Pure Ref. And let's see. Pure Ref is right here. Now, now, you guys can't see Pure Ref, but Pure Ref is the best thing since sliced bread. And what it does, it really, really helps you with your reference. It's always on top, no matter what programs you have in the background or foreground. It's always going to stand on top, which is just amazing, you know, on every level amazing. So I'm just going to get my reference material and just drop it in there. And there you go. So I have my reference material. You guys can see everything. And yes, Pure Ref is fantastic. I believe it's Pure Ref 
Dot org, as it sounds, Doctor, it's like unbelievable for reference material. Uh, never use anything else once you have it. Uh, there's some really good videos on Pure Ref, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get one myself. I mean, make one. Yeah, it's a definite program. It's free. Uh, when they ask, you know, how much you want to uh, donate, it's up to you. But uh, they don't demand that you donate, which is great. And if you, you know, it's so it's great, you know. Uh, you know, when I can, I'll, I'll draw some money their way because it's a great program. Harry Northwest NW, how are you today? Okay, so we got to make sure that the air is good. So I'm using my Extreme, I mean my Vega 1000. If you haven't tried the Vega 1000, highly, highly recommend it. It's amazing. So you see I have my flashlights ready. I am ready for, I'm ready and I have my weather radio in case of an emergency. And I have all my electronics all set. So I am set, you know. Yeah, doctor, she does have these amazing eyes. And so who has seen the Netflix miniseries uh, out there? It's just so fantastic. Uh, Queen's Gambit, you know. And let's see. And I am going to make sure before I start, I always have to make sure that I spray on a practice and not on my actual work. You never want to go right in there, you know? Yes, so Willie has seen it. That's great, me too. And uh, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to lightly... Uh, calm down some of these pencil lines. That's the first thing you want to do. That's so important. You want to see them, but you don't want them to get trapped underneath the white. So you want to have as less po least possible at all. Uh, no, actually it isn't a true story, but because uh, I don't believe there was a female uh, world champion yet. I think it was based on somebody, though. It always is, right? I'm just going to calm down some of these here. Okay, so let's, let's make this happen. So you never just want to go straight in. You want to think about it like a chess player. And it's funny that uh, today I am uh, painting this picture because I always say that painting is much like playing chess. You're always several moves ahead. So that's always something I say, you know. All right, so we are painting the white. And you see there's this uh, blast on her forehead. And I'm going to use my freehand shield because I don't want to get white everywhere. I want to be controlled. I'm about six inches away from the subject, and I am going super light. So when you're painting this yourself, you want to go light. But I want you to go lighter than you want to go. And as light as you think I want you to go, I want you to go even lighter. I know it's uh, like I'm a broken record, but that's the only way that we... We get those synapses and those uh, those connections in our brain that we have to be super light. And this is where we put in the light that's going to basically be the foundation of the whole painting. So if I want it even lighter, I'm going to actually be a little bit further, maybe seven inches. And when you're painting something like this, when you want to go light, it is crucial. It is absolutely crucial that you keep your distance steady you don't want to go five seven three two because each little nuance of how close or how far away you are from the surface is going to change how how much paint is put on there how light it is so you know thinking that we can just get lazy and just change our distance you're going to pay the price and why pay that price so so pay the price now by being diligent so you don't have to pay the price later by fixing everything. Uh, I bet you're amazing at both there, Willie, you know? 
Oh, hey, hey, what's up, Mr. Steve? Glad you're back, sir. I, I know uh, in Ohio, do you guys get any of this, uh, any of this storm going on? Super light, guys. I'm going to erase. And so I definitely want to make sure that I keep my distance correct, right? There we go. And as you can see, we are just very slowly working these things. Keep your distance. Just pretend that you have this like you know this piece of glass over here and you can't go further down so you want to keep your distance absolutely consistent spray once let it go because it's not going to show up right away but it's going to show up a second later you know definitely john distance affects the atomization of the paint it affects the amount of paint uh the uh, gradation just so many different things and when someone takes my class, that's something that we talk about the very first day is distance, you know? John says, uh, Steve says, uh, they just got very top edge yesterday. Feel guilty not being the hurricane season on the East Coast. It's been a doozy already there, Mr. Lady, so I'm glad that you're missing it, you know? See this, this is all very important what I'm doing. There we go. So how you been, Mr. Dr. Steve? How's everything? Always great to see you, my friend. So today we are going to give away a mug Everyone who actually said they wanted a mug by emailing me at paintedglyphs at gmail.com was eligible. But I'm going to open it up today. And uh, so uh, if you want a mug, just email me at paintedglyphs at gmail.com. And today we'll have the running of the, um, of the mug contest. So let me know. And I'm actually going to try and do the whites of her eyes because they're so beautiful. And I want to do that with the airbrush. There you go. Oh, Blue's in Ohio. How cool is that? Oh, wow, I-80, yes. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our hands. And you can see how little I have actually been using the white and just how effective the white is. Wow, 120, wow. And how are the tests going? Is it is it like a large positive amount, doctor? You must be really tired, and I that makes me more honored, even more honored that you you took some time to hang out with us on this live stream. Thank you so much. Very light, five to seven inches away, depending. And I want to separate the head. There we go. Oh yes, I did get your email nameless, definitely. And so that's good. I 
And let's do this scarf here. So even though you're seven inches away, you still can have really nice detail. And if you maintain your distance, you'll see that, you know, as long as you hit it once, you're going to get a fairly even distribution of paint, which is nice. Oh, hey, Raul, how's it going? Yes, this is amazing, definitely. Uh, amazing uh, show, so I appreciate that, Raul. Yeah, when I saw this, I was like, I have to do it because not many people are painting her, and she just has an amazing look, doesn't she? And so that's fantastic. And uh, Dr. Steve says, the tests are trash. Oh, no. Suspect a lot of false negatives, and people get the rapid tests and don't want to isolate a quarantine. Wow, that does sound like a big issue there. Unbelievable. And now we're going to work on the hands. And we're going to just bring in those lights there. And really be mindful of where the darks are. And then we're going to come in with the light mixture. Now going ahead and putting the actual uh, light mix, the white mixture here does two things. It establishes the white. We can always darken down, but it's much harder to lighten. So we have that white base. But also what's very effective is that we also we also basically uh, you know have like a tonal framework so we'll have our lightest lights already established. Like I said, as light as you want to go, go even lighter. Because I barely touched it, and look how, how light everything looks, right? Even with the crazy camera work going on today. Oh, thanks so much, Blue. Yes, everyone, when you get a chance, hit that like button. That would be very exciting and cool. So it seems like my uh, part ones always do really well. So it's nice to have this really nice group here and i thank you so much you know already 21 people here for me in my little live stream I, i'm very happy with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my aggressive eraser but i'm not going to use it aggressively and what i'm going to do is start maybe erasing some of this white a little bit just a little bit it's not going to make a big difference but just getting rid of the white actually helps and same thing we have this right here we can do two things. We can get rid of this pencil line and we can erase this uh, white there. So gives us a much better, uh, much better beginning than having that pencil line. So that's cool. And then we have this interesting dark that comes out here. The thing about pencil lines, think of pencil lines as training wheels. You don't want to get rid of them too early, you know. That's very important. Don't get rid of the pencil lines too early. Think of them as training wheels. If your kid's training, and you definitely don't want to take the training wheels off the kid uh, first day, they'll crash. So think of ourselves as that. You know, we have those pencil lines for a reason, and we don't want to crash. So let's not get rid of them prematurely, right? So that's very important. Okay, so as we go, I'm still going to try and fix this lighting situation as we go. So there we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load up my Extreme Patriot Arrow. I think I'm done for the white for a while. So let me go ahead and move this over here. Always clean off, clean up your white mixture when you're painting because that is uh, very much disaster to your 
hairbrush. So have any of you out there left this on? So I'll show you. So look what happens uh, when you leave it on. Oh, it doesn't do it. We go like that. Huh. Okay. Sometimes when you go like this, it shoots like a projectile, but it didn't happen that way for me today. I don't know what, nothing is going right today. I wouldn't say nothing's going right. Nothing's going as expected, <laughs> but that's okay. So, so let's see if we have some really good unexpected stuff happening, you know, so that's good. So today's a day of unexpected occurrences. So Raul, what's new, my friend? Be right back. I am back and this time it's personal okay so again go ahead everybody and uh, go ahead and uh, send an email to Timothy at paintedglyphs.com for your chance to win a mug personalized mug ink flinger mug with your name on it which is going to be really a lot of fun you'll love it you'll have your coffee with it or tea or whatnot and I'll ship it to you free. So, so go ahead. We'll have one winner, and this is a very small group, so everyone has a chance. So, ow! I'm going to go ahead and put some of this light mixture in there. Now, here's something that I'm I'm working with right now. So, I am actually doing a detailed light mixture. And I'm going to be offering that in the future. It's just going to, I'm still perfecting the detail light mixture. So before I do anything, I, uh, oh no, John, no coffee yet. But that's a great idea. I just might do that. Thanks for that idea, John. <laughs> that sounds great. Okay, so now I have my light mixture, uh, my detail mixture in here. Working on two pieces, Bruce Lee and Raysa X. Wow, that Bruce Lee sounds amazing. That, he's always been a great subject. Okay, so this is definitely glasses territory. And of course I can't find my glasses. And so let's go ahead and we're going to just steam forward. So let's start uh, with her left eye right here. And we'll zoom in. So I think you will like that if I zoom in. Let's see. There we go, and let's go ahead and start this process together. Of course, I'm using my detail, my customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. And we'll continue with that one second rule, everyone. Oh, great, yes. Can't wait for that. You're going to really love it. The detail that you get with this airbrush, Raul, you're going to be like, why do people spend all that money on a micro when they don't have to? And again, we don't want to get too white. And uh, uh, too white, and we don't want to get too wet. So two of the things we don't want to get.
no W's. You don't want to get too wet, you don't want to get too white, and you don't want to get too wild. There we go. Little bit of spidering, but it's not, you can't see it to the naked eye, so that's good. So you see just a little bit of it, but nothing really to write home about. And you see it comes down here. I can lower my air pressure a little bit. There we go. And let's go ahead and just work on this real subtle area right there. Yes, <laughs> definitely in the book, Willie. That's for sure. And let's go on over to this side. And we'll just move over here. And let's see. We'll start, of course, with... I'm going to lower that air pressure just a little bit more. Yeah, see when I lowered the air pressure, it gave me more control. And I'm doing a one second rule, so I'm not painting until I'm looking. So I'm looking for a second, and then I'm painting for a second. Just like so. And distance, you can like change your distance to get really tight detail, which is fantastic. Hey Brad, how's it going? Yes, definitely. Definitely will be for sale at the end, sir. So thanks for asking, Brad. And I'm not actually going to paint in the crease of the eyelid yet because I want to draw that in with a pencil. And no time like the present, right? So let's see. We're just going to come up here. One second, rule it. Kind of disappears here that crease and then it picks up again over here and then sort of drops off and let's see hey what's up mom and Lama? how's it going great to see you so everything, everyone, that's Sheila from high school. So it's great to see you, Sheila. Thank you so much for stopping by. And let me fix this. Actually, let's get rid of that other occurrence because that's like really super crazy. Let's see which one goes away. Okay, the wrong one goes away. So it's the other USB. And let's see where that is. There it is. Bam, we got rid of it. We'll keep the one we want. There we go. Okay. And we'll put her over here. All right. So let's go ahead and attack this crease if we may. of like when you do fine lines like that think of it as like tiny little dagger strokes you know that connect right that's all it really is and since we're here let's see can we can we come in and do some very light light detail here actually what I'm gonna do is I want to dilute this ink a little bit more because I want to get a little bit more detail. So I'm just going to dilute it even more. It's something I've been doing in the early stages a little bit more when I want to get more detail. 
you know, the work is always going to evolve. As long as we're working every day, or as much as we can, then you'll see that the work will definitely grow. And it'll always evolve. And that's what I think. So, so you see that my work's starting to evolve, that I actually go super diluted in the beginning stage, which I will have it down to a science and then have a, a dilutioning next to the light mixture, right? So let's see if this actually is more effective with detail. Oh yeah, look at this. So watch this, watch this detail I'm able to get with this. Super diluted. See this? Totally a game changer when you want to do those really tight details in the very beginning. See that? So the extra dilution is really something that I've been doing and it has been become very effective in the details. So it kind of increases your control by at least 20%, you know, and that's not, and that's not being conservative, you know, I honestly feel it does. It really, it really, uh, really helps. So let's go down to our nose and we'll work on our nostrils together. Okay. One second rule, everybody. Same thing over here. I haven't seen Wendy, no. I mean, I think I did see Wendy online. She was, I think her mom was getting married, so she did post that during the week, the weekend, but I haven't talked to her. I did talk to her on Friday. She said she's feeling better, but still having some, some issues with the surgery and everything. We're always great when she's here. We always miss her. I miss everyone when you don't hear. You know, every one of you. You don't sh show up for whatever reason. In good reasons, definitely. You know, life happens. I'm just so thankful when everyone does make it. But I do realize that life goes on. And But I miss you when you're not here. Not one of you that I don't miss when you're not here. You're all my friends, you know? So, you know, I don't take it lightly. And I might be sad, you know, my, my life, my friends are online, but that's where my friends are. And I'm not ashamed to say. See the detail I'm getting in the nose, everybody? That is uh, definitely. So what I would do with the light mixture, those of you who are already, you know, ink flingers out there, go ahead and dilute your, dilute your light mixture and play around with it. And you'll see that, you know, you'll see when it gets too much or too, you know, too much or too little, and then you'll dilute it where it's just right. So definitely. Uh, that's something to, uh, you know, really uh, play around with. So, yes, the you have the light, medium, and dark mixture, but play around. You could discover something that I don't. So, they're really, it's all for experimentation, you know. Uh, oh, Willie had eye surgery today. Oh, man, thanks, Willie. I appreciate that. I appreciate you watching, especially after that. So... Uh, but I'm really, really uh, uh, glad you're here. How are you feeling, Willie? Are you feeling okay? And so Blue says she has a question. Would I ever consider doing a piece with black and white and sepia inks together? You know, I have seen uh, the Renaissance artists do that. You know, like uh, Raphael, Leonardo, 
Uh, they did a lot of that where they would mix black and and kind of a sepia crayon together on a, a yellow paper and it looks great you know so that's something I'm going to experiment I bought some really cool different color papers to play with the sepia today uh, I was at Hobby Lobby and you see now we're gonna do this side we'll go back here Okay, so you see how slowly we're building things up. We're not going crazy. And Patty says, uh, I look forward to Wednesday with Tim and... Oh, thank you. I look forward to seeing you, Patty. That's for sure. Uh, oh, I'm glad it's no big deal. So I hope that afterwards you can see like the bionic man, you know, when he could like... Doo -doo 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 -doo, and he'll be like, hey, there's a penny across the street or something like that. You know, that would be really cool. <laughs> so now I'm about seven inches away and I'm basically just uh, working on a value here. See, I'm just building up values. And uh, so, you know, I am doing the smaller details, but I'm also doing the larger shapes as well. So last night I was studying a little German. I, I love languages. And so I've been studying a little bit German. I, I speak Spanish, a little bit of Portuguese, a little bit of Italian. But, um, you know, I just wish I had more time to really delve into languages. It's so exciting. Again, I'm going to be working on some of the larger shapes here, guys. That's the great thing about part one. You don't know what it's going to come out like. I did get some water. Got to make sure I don't drink my airbrush water because that would be gross. Oh boy. I'm thirsty. Okay. So, we're going to continue now and great we have uh, 18 people watching right now so that's fantastic thank you everybody for hanging out and let's work on her lips that would be good okay now before I go further I am going to look for my glasses because when I'm doing detail if I don't have my glasses it's just not going to be as good it's going to be a little fuzzy and I think I'm fuzzy enough so, I believe you're ready to go to the studio. Yes, that's where I make the hats and the, the mugs and everything. So I had this. Oh, thanks, Willie. Willie says it's going to be a good one. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Okay. Now I'm in business. Got my glasses. Got my detail mixture on. We, this is going to be good. All right. So now let's go ahead and work on the dark first. Lower that air pressure a little bit. One second rule, everybody. So how many chess players do we have out there? I know Brad plays chess and Willie plays chess. The crease is everything in between the two lifts because 
That pretty much describes both shapes of the upper lip and the lower lip. So if we get that down, we'll be good. And now we can go ahead and start describing the upper lip. Now, it's very soft edge. You know I have a pencil line there. I'm just going to go ahead and and make sure that I'm a good distance away to get that soft edge, everybody. Oh, John says that he dabbles once in a while. That's great. And, oh, thank you, Blue. I appreciate that. Yes, John, I need my glasses to find my glasses. Something like that, right? <laughs> I'll be like, Alexa, where are my glasses? So now we did the upper lip. Let's make sure we take care of the lower lip. And I know I had the pencil lines there, but we're going to erase, erase them. Just want to keep those chain wheels on there for a little bit longer. What I loved about this show, uh, Queen's Gambit, is that she was a floored uh, person, you know, like the hero was, the hero had problems, wasn't this perfect person, and I love that about, about her, you know, she was erotic, and she came from, you know, didn't come from privilege, and, you know, she had this gift, and she just, you know, went with it, you know, this gift took her places, and it's just amazing. I really, I really was floored, floored, F-L-O-O-R-E-D, by this show. So now when we zoom out, oh, so Steve says that his older brother loves chess and would kick his butt all the time. <laughs> Maybe he just like the game. Yeah, that definitely could happen, right? You know, just like kids with video games, you know, they, you know, they'd be like, Uncle Larry, can I play, uh, can you play with me? And then you play with them, they just like destroy you, eviscerate you, and you're like, I'm never playing again. So yeah, I definitely know how that feels. I've been playing chess since I was about five, maybe four, probably four, because I didn't, I wasn't in school yet when I was playing with brothers and sisters who were older, and, uh, I just excelled at the game, and I wasn't like mega talented at it, but I excelled at it, and I loved it. And today I play, I probably play today about four games a day online. And I have my good days where I can beat everybody, and I have my bad days where I lose to everyone and their brother. <laughs> so, checkers. You know, I never really did good in checkers, because the... And there's real skill involved with checkers. It's just that's not where my, that's not my wheelhouse, right? So I'm not very good at checkers. So it's easy for me not to like it because I'm not good at it. I like the idea of working several moves ahead, you know, the way they do it in chess. And to, you know, the whole idea of deception. Chess is all about deception. And uh, it's all about being sneaky and, you know, not letting the person know what your true intent is, your opponent. And that's what it's all about. That's chess, in a nutshell. There we go. And you see, by doing this is a little bit of a different approach than we have been the last couple of weeks. But I like it. You always want to keep the old approaches going, right? So those who follow my live streams, you can see that my approach really grows, right? You can see there's a pragmatic movement in how I apply everything and the steps. You'll definitely see that a lot. But I also like to once in a while go back to basics. And that's what this painting is about. This is more like going back to basics and uh, not getting caught up so much in 
than technique, but really getting caught up in watching and observation. So that's what this is about right now. We're just worrying about observation. Oh, John, family round the Monopoly board at Christmas. That could be a lot of fun, but Monopoly, I've seen a lot of fights happen after that. Not fist fights, but you know. Why are you not giving me a break? You know, I gave you a break financially, and it's like brings out all these like, like weird situations sometimes. Or maybe that was just my family. I'm not sure, but it always had fights. Because one person ends <laughs> up with all this money and all these hotels, and the other one has like four dollars, and they're they're still moving that thimble across the board, you know, and. So they get like an 11 at the end and land on Park Place, which has like hotels. Oh, that's, it's funny yet tragic at the same time. So as you can see, I still have that detailed mixture. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some reductive details. So basically using the eraser to erase out some details here. And then here... We'll just get rid of some of our training wheels. Some of these pencil lines. Patty, have a good night. Don't work so hard. You know, fights are compulsory. <laughs> That's so true. John, definitely. Definitely, definitely. So, so far, after all the wind and everything, things are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit calm with the live stream. No more issues so far. We, we weathered the storm, so to speak. And when you're erasing, remember you're working with paper. So you still want to make sure that you uh, are being very uh, delicate with the paper. Because the paper is delicate. Pencil lines are your friends, so don't get rid of them too quick, you know? You never want to get rid of friends, but uh, don't send them on their way. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, hey, you never want to let go friends, you know? Let's go ahead and... Uh, there we go. See, this is a muscle right here underneath the bag of the eyes. So you definitely want to make sure you pay homage to that, right? Because it's there and you don't want to ignore it. You ignore it and then she'll start looking like a cartoon. And that's not good. I don't think that, you know, Miss Anya Taylor-Joy would like her to be looking like a cartoon. We want to give her portrait, you know, the respect and dignity that she deserves. And so, as you can see... We are going to continue making this happen. So now we're doing, we're, we're going at a pretty good, pretty good pace. Get rid of some of these pencil lines now that we can. And let's see. Okay, let's do this dark of her neck, right? That sounds good. And we're going to use our freehand shield here. We're just going to do old fashioned, you know, freehand shields today. about three inches away from the subject and right here looks like either there was uh, something on my freehand shield so always make sure you wipe your freehand shield you never know what's on them so and try not to press it too hard onto your surface
trigonatic arch here, or a cheekbone. And we're just going to bring this down here. And then we have this transition tone right here. I'm going to increase my distance. And we're just going to bring this down. And now things will look a little blotchy because everything else is so light and we haven't really built up anything. So, no worries, we'll get there when we get there. John, uh, so who's saying good? Oh, John, have a great night, my friend. Thank you so much for hanging out. Oh, wow, school run in four hours. Take care, John. Always a pleasure, my friend. So definitely we, we're going to go ahead and work on her, her eyebrows here. Let's make that happen. And we're just going to really worry about the overall value. We're not going to get involved in detail right now. Let me lower that air pressure. So you see this Extreme Patriot Arrow is allowing me to do things that before was only relegated to airbrushes like the Custom Micron or the Harder and Steambeck Infinity. But hey Todd, good to see you. But I figured out a way to actually customize this by extending that needle out from the nozzle and other changes to make this airbrush just as good if not better than those more expensive airbrushes. And I sell it for only $149 and that comes fully tested, not just doing squiggly lines like Iwata does. I don't need someone to go like this. So can you tell me my airbrush is good? Yeah. Okay, it's good. Yeah, sorry Iwata. You have to do a little better than that. So what I do is I take this airbrush and I work with it for a half hour making sure that it's perfect and if there's something wrong I fix those things until when I'm working on it for a half hour straight and it does everything I wanted to do then I send it out to you without exception nobody does that and so that basically is uh, you know why I feel that you know my airbrush is such a value at 149 you have something that's tested like no other airbrush company does they couldn't do it. They don't have the time. But I have the time. So, you know, I definitely take all the parts and I, and I adjust them and fix them. So it is absolutely to my specifications to what I work on. As you see here, you know, it's the same thing. You know, the same specifications I'm using here in this live stream is the same, are the same that I use. Um, you know, when I customize your airbrush. So she's coming along pretty quickly, huh? Hey there, World Exploration from France. Stefan, how you doing? Great to see you, my friend. How are you? So, so Stefan does some really great things. Uh, I really love how he, you know, does some great experimentation and comes up with some great solutions for uh, working with acrylic and uh, glycerin. So definitely my hat's off to you there, Mr. Mr. Stefan. So now you can see, just by doing your eyebrows, you can see there's a lot of life in her already. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to get that life of her, her character. Uh, my teacher, Harvey Dinnerstein, at the National Academy School of Fine Arts, said something to me very profound. He said, it's great that you paint the model and it looks like the model, but you, what you want to do is you want to take that model and you want to find out what makes them special out of all the people in all the world of all time. And then you, uh, then you elevate that or amplify that amplify what makes them special and that's how you have character in your portraits 
And you know what? He told me that many, many years ago, and I can see him telling me today, and it hasn't left me. So it's one thing to do portraits, but it's another thing to go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and try and get the character, what makes them special. That's what's going to separate your painting from everyone else. There are a lot of people who can paint photorealistic, but can people go ahead and grab the character of the model? Can they? And throughout art history, those who could are the ones that stand out, right? Oh, thanks, Todd. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, those who could in art history stand out. Franz Howells. Let me see if I can show you Franz Howells, okay? And let's see. I'm going to look for Franz Howells, the Laughing Cavalier. And you will see, this is a painting that was done in the 1600s, and it still looks beautiful today. I said Franz Cavalier. It's Franz Howells. The painting is called the Laughing Cavalier. So... And it's his most famous painting. So here it is. Now I'm going to save it and then we're going to put it up here. So you're going to love it when you see it. Save image as. And I'm just going to put that right here. Okay, so here comes the Laughing Cavalier. And you'll know what I'm saying. You know, my live streams are not just about, you know, you know, just about technique and everything, but also things that I learned in art school over the many years that I'd like to share with everybody. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's Franz Howells, The Laughing Cavalier. So do you guys really see what I mean? Is that this painting is not just a portrait, but it's uh, it's just a, like a moment, right? It's just so beautiful. And I believe it was 1634 or 1624. Let me see. Get my glasses on. It was 1624. And it has a freshness as it was just painted today. You know? Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am a minor art. I am an amateur art historian, Willie. I do love it so much. And, um, but yeah, Franz Howells. And it's a very painterly approach. But see, that's what I want to do when I'm painting somebody. I want to paint the Laughing Cavalier. That's that's who really, uh, yes, the lace is incredible. And when you see it up close, it really is just, Franz Hal's work is so slapdash and amazing. Like, it's just the energy level in Franz Hal's work is out of this world. It really is. And so... So, yeah, so that's basically, uh, you know, the approach that uh, that I want. There's also another artist called Anwar Dormier. Let me see if he was one of the first satirists. Uh, and I believe, of course, Anwar Dormier, he is French, right? So let's go to images. And you can see how, uh, you know, how he takes it to a new level, right? Daumier does take it to a definite different level. And um, let's see. So I'm going to do Anwar Daumier portrait. Let's see. We're just going to go drawing. Sometimes they they get so literal in these searches. But here's, uh, this this definitely is a Dormier right here. I'm going to save it and show you. Uh, let's see. Save image as. Okay. So now let's bring Dormier in here. And I'm going to go to media. And here's Mr. Dormier. Okay. So you see this was done, uh, I believe. But look at that. And this was, now this looks like something that could be in the New Yorker magazine, right? And let me see when he was alive. Uh, 
let's see. We'll go birth. But I just want, want to show you the, the lifeblood of the work, you know, how important it is. So he was uh, born in February 1808 in France, in Marseille. And you can just see how, how the work has this really nice life's blood to it. And very modern look. And the artists didn't always do that. They were far and few between that really looked for the character. And I think that's what we really need to do, is we always need to look for the character of the work. And we definitely could find that in art history. And uh, so always look to the master, masters, always drink from the river and not from the streams. And so that's where you're really going to find your real teachers. You know, at the great museums, watching documentaries, learning about the lives of these artists. Very, very important. Okay, so we are at 1041. I'm going to check my email and I'm going to write down the names. And then we are going to do the Wheel of Names. And everyone will say, what is the Wheel of Names? And it's uh, quite fascinating. And let me just uh, write down who is going to be in the running for the mug. I'm excited because you're going to love it. You really are. You don't know it yet, but you're going to love it. Okay. So, let's take a look. So, I'm going to go to my email and see if anyone emailed me today. Okay, so we have Willie and Chris Garcia. Whoop, that's too soft. So, we have Willie and we have Chris Garcia. And then... Let's see who else we have. So that's what we have today, Willie and Rick. So those are the people so far. And let's scroll down to see who, who was last week. And then we have the Nameless Subscriber. And Mr. John Geekman. And then we have John Payne. And then we have Mr. Rick Martin. Way to go, Rick. And we have Blue. And I think that's, oh, Raul. Not, not to forget Raul, right? Very cool. And we have Mr. Todd. And so just go ahead and email uh, paintedglyphs at gmail.com and you will see uh, you definitely will so so you have a few moments to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website called Wheel of Names let's see Wheel of Names and I think that's oh yeah here we go it's a random picker and what I can do so let me go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and look at this screen and we'll put in the names. So this is going to be exciting. So let's see. So now I'm going to go to a different window. Okay, so here we have this window here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a source and I'm going to go to web page and screen capture you see if this one oh this one okay so now you see here we have the wheel of names and you all can see that and can you hear me can you guys still hear me let's see so can you all still hear me and oh that's not the screen Okay, so here we go. I'm going to make this big. And we are going to put in the names right now. So we have Willie. Oh, it's over here. So we have Willie. And then we have Chris Garcia. And then we have Rick. 
And we have Nameless Subscriber. And we have John D. And John P. And we have Rick Martin. We have Blue, we have Raul, did I say Raul yet? No, okay. And we have Todd. Okay, so let's go back here. And I'm just gonna make sure that you all can hear me. So you all can hear me, that's good. Let's go back to the Wheel of Names. So I just have to click this to spin. I think I have everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let me check my email one last time if we have anyone else who came in last minute. Nope, it looks like that is going to be everything. And great. So now I'm going to click it and here goes. Let's see who the winner is. Willie, you won the mug. All right. Way to go, my friend. All right. Way to go, Rick. Uh, Willie, look at that. That's pretty cool. So the Wheel of Names really worked. So thank goodness for the Wheel of Names, right? So that's exciting. Let me see if I go back to our... So I want to do something like that every week. What do you guys think? Does that seem like a good plan, everybody? Uh, so way to go, Willie. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to go get it. Be right back. Okay, so so here is the mug, and it says Ink Flingers, and it'll say Willie over here. And on this side, of course, our slogan, Go Extreme or Go Home, and that's going to be sent out to you as soon as possible. So way to go. Oh, wow, thank you so much, Dr. Steve. How you doing? So... Uh, definitely realize you guys have to step out. You know, you have a lot going on. So thanks for coming back, Dr. Steve. I appreciate that. And so pretty cool. All right. So we're going to go back to work here. So it's 1049. What's really weird, I thought it was 1049 like a half hour ago. <laughs> Is it really still 1049? Let's see. I am having fun. It just seems like, you know, I must have misread 1049 earlier. That's hilarious. Okay. And so we're going to develop the hair a little bit. Not much. Just some of the larger shapes. And I always say larger shapes. Oh, I want to show you something I found today at Hobby Lobby. So I know this, this has been, uh, you know, kind of an interesting live stream because I leave and come back a lot. But uh, I did find something I want to share with you all. So let's see. It must have fell out of my bag and 
but it's a whole big thing of Blackbeard wheat. I finally found it. <laughs> and Dr. Steve says, this is the all-nighter session. <laughs> Definitely feels feels kind of like a Twilight Zone type of thing with the crazy storm out there and the tornado warnings. Okay, so. Yeah, I found this big thing, $9 worth of Blackbeard wheat. So whenever you order stuff for me, either inks or accessories or an airbrush, expect some free Blackbeard wheat because I'm definitely going to share it with you all. Maybe that's what I'll do next week. I'll make the giveaway Blackbeard wheat. Okay, so that's going to be the giveaway. So if you guys email me, uh, Timothy, I mean, uh, paintedglyphs at gmail.com. Um, Next week you'll be in the drawing for some Blackbeard wheat, which is very hard to find. And I'll send that out to you with some other gifts as well. So, definitely. Oh, hey Dr. Steve, yes. Yeah, so it's uh, Painted Glyphs, uh, just paintedglyphs.com. And you can see a lot of the different things I sell. You know, to have to do with this technique, you know, the erasers and everything like that. The airbrushes. You already have airbrushes, I know, definitely. Um, yeah, a lot of things you can get on there. And pretty soon, I'm going to be getting, I'm going to be coming out with the sepia line. So that's not out there yet, but it's coming real soon. So that's exciting. So uh, definitely. Um, and also, I sell the t-shirts and the mugs and everything but you always email me dr steven we'll definitely talk and see what we can do for you hey brad thank you so much for that sir that's very nice thank you i really appreciate that and i really thank everyone who uh has been uh so nice to go ahead and support the channel and uh, it means a lot. And those who support me on Patreon, such as uh, Dr. Steve, I mean, I'm really so grateful for, to you and such a great supporter of the channel and everything. And I want to go ahead and go on Patreon real quick and uh, just see if I could thank those who, who take the time out to, you know, just help... Uh, Help the channel to keep going and to have have the funds to uh, keep growing. So I just want to thank uh, Phil Lunt. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Great, great uh, supporter. Christian Cabasa, thank you so much. Colette, I appreciate you so much. Uh, Dr. Steve as well, thank you. And uh, Todd Bemis. I appreciate you, Todd, and Gloria Kavasa. Thank you, everybody. You guys are just amazing. And without you, this channel would not be able to continue. And so I don't take it lightly. And thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Brad. I appreciate that. And uh, you guys are all great. So uh, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you and how important you are. And so let's go back to this young lady here, and we're just going to continue. So it's nice to have like different breaks in the action during the live streams, the giveaways. Don't forget, paintedglyphs at gmail.com. I'm going to be giving away Blackbeard Wheat, which is impossible to find. And so I found some today, and I'm like, it's too good just to keep to myself. So. You'll see that Blackbeard wheat is excellent to uh, get those, uh, get that sort of organic feel to the hair. It really is fantastic. There we go. And you see, even though we have, uh, oh yes, Patreon, definitely, Todd. And uh, so we really appreciate that. So I went ahead and diluted the light mixture and you see even by diluting things look a little dark but it's good to dilute it because this way you can 
definitely get a lot more detailed and a lot less commitment to anything you put down, which is fantastic. Oh, it's not rum? <laughs> <laughs> oh thanks blue have a great night always a pleasure and i am getting that shirt out to you and it's almost here and then i'll get that blue won the uh, hat last week or two weeks ago and she is actually going to uh so she won because she already bought a hat so i changed it to a shirt so that's cool And I'm using my freehand shield to keep the face clean. Oh, and Blue, you're doing some great artwork too. over here I'm gonna bring back my reference you won't see it because pure ref doesn't show up on the live stream not sure why but that's sort of the way the program works I guess it's a good thing because I can have the reference up and not have it in the way of you guys seeing it yes exactly doctor definitely uh, it really is fantastic, you know? Uh, it's just great, the Blackbeard Wheat. It's a great tool. And, you know, I'm not real big on on stencils uh, and stuff like that. I'm not too big on, like, texture stencils. But hair, you know, it's impossible to really get that texture of the hair in those organic shapes. So it really, really helps to take your... Your, your painting hair game to the next level. So that's good. Um, so here what I'm going to do. So you see the dark uh, area of her, her shirt or her sweater. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, mask it out. So I don't mess up anything. Because when you do large areas like that. It's bound to have overspray. So I'm going to be quite careful there. be a lot of fun to paint let's see here I will be right back guys I'm just gonna put the kettle on make some tea for the end of the night Man alive, is that rain out there? It is really crazy out there. Yes, Mr. Steve, tea time. 
Definitely gotta gotta re relax the nerves a little bit, you know. Yes, true. You know, with the black beard, we very good point. Nameless. So Steve, uh, Steve Leahy ordered some ink from me. I'm going to send you some of that Blackbeard wheat. I don't know if you used it before, Mr. Leahy, but you're going to love it. So I'm going to send you a little bit uh, with your order. So that would be cool. But definitely, definitely uh, go ahead and email paintedglyphs at gmail.com. Let me see if I can bring up the... Uh, do I still have it here? Okay, that's okay. Uh, so paintedglyphs at gmail.com. That would be definitely the way to go. And uh, we'll put you in the running for next year, next week's uh, giveaway, which will include Blackbeard wheat and some other goodies. So I'm going to do that. And uh, all the stuff is going to be pertaining to this technique so you can do it at home, which is really great, you know, really fantastic. I want you all to do to work on this technique and follow along. I have so many uh, live streams, uh, you know, parts one to six, parts one to five, from beginning to end. So if you haven't tried this technique, go ahead and give it a shot, and uh, I'm sure you're gonna love it as I do. You know. Anyone here know a good substitute for 4040 bleed checker? Hmm, that's outside of my realm, so I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else would, sir. Uh, Dr. Steve says he sent me a, re a, re a message. Oh, wow, great. Oh, wow, no, that would be fantastic. I have this new mentorship program. Dr. Steve will we'll do it on your time, and uh, we'll meet uh, once a week. And from there, we also have a group class, and uh, it's really great. So I know you're very busy, so we can actually do it different times of different weeks, so we can fit you in. And uh, so the technique with the teaching has actually grown, so you're really going to love it. So that I'm excited to hear that, Dr. Steve. Yes, so that is, I'm always excited to get new students because... Uh, you know, you all stay with me more than a month, right? I, I have some people who are students of mine now for a year and a half. And that's great. So that's fantastic. Nayla said he ordered some candy 2.0 and forgot the bleed checker. Well, that's outside of my realm. I think Dr. Uh, Steve Leahy might be a good uh, person for that, you know? Um... Yes, and uh, Brad has worked with the uh, Blackbeard wheat, so he knows a lot about it, which is great, you know. So how was that? That was really cool, the, uh, the, the Wheel of Names. I mean, that worked really, really great. So the chat disconnected? I hope not. You guys, I still see you there, uh, Mr. Steve. I mean, Dr. Steve, I still see you. So maybe some people got disconnected. Wouldn't surprise me with the way the winds and the rains are happening over here. Definitely would not surprise me one bit. So you see, we did already, we do already have her likeness and we're still in the very light mixture. And I'm going to take the eraser, I'm going to erase out the pencil lines on this hand, on his finger, because the pencil is making it very, very dark. So let's see there. And uh, so we're going to be working on our hand now. Oh, so <laughs> definitely. So I'll call you Steve from now on. Uh, there's a YouTube health video you made a long time ago. Oh, okay. Perfect. So Steve, that is fantastic. Oh, very cool. Okay. And... Uh, but, you know, it's like, I always know that, you know, you guys go to, so guys and girls go through so much schooling, and, you know, the name doctor is uh, 
you know, it's just like, you know, you guys earned that. But I definitely appreciate the ability to just call you Steve. That's great, you know. <laughs> And so I'm really looking forward to her mouth, the way she's just puckering her lip just a little bit, like that pout on the bottom lip. I'm looking forward to doing that. Oh, look at this. So Mr. Leahy says uh, to Nameless Question that the product that uh, they make acts as a barrier, and he doesn't know of a substitute, but he is sure there is something that will work. Wow. And uh, Steve says... Uh, he has to differentiate himself from some DEA agent and probably some lobster. <laughs> That's always a good thing, right? You know, uh, we don't, we don't want our names to be infamous, right? Uh, I feel like a lot of people have like infamous names or names of famous people and they have to almost differentiate themselves from them. So as you see, I, I didn't make a lot of, uh, you know, stencils, or, you know, for the background and everything. I'll do that for next week, and that will be pretty cool. So right now it's just, uh, just blocking it in, doing it old school way, you know, because the technique is always growing. I'll be right back, everybody. Now that I cleaned the cup, I might as well use it. So it's going to be green tea today. It's always green tea. Who am I kidding? Thank you, everybody. I'm back. And so, um, Mr. Steve Leahy talked about on his live stream, which I felt was fascinating, that he was thinking of doing a sort of a, of a guide for all of the uh, really good airbrush live streams out there. Are you still with us, Steve? Uh, 
And uh, so, hey, Mr. Chris, how you doing? Oh, you didn't win, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, sorry you didn't win the, uh, I had you win the, uh, the Wheel of Names, but uh, Willie won. And uh, so, Mr. Leahy was talking about a, a guy that will be online, and I would be happy to put it on my website, and people can put it on other people's website, where they would have all the live streams that are doing uh, weekly live streams in Airbrush and their times. And it would be really cool if there could be a way to update it, maybe a Facebook page or something, where they could be like, okay, this person changed the time from 8.30 to 7.30, or they're not doing it Tuesday to Wednesday. So that sounds very exciting. Oh, great. So you were talking about it all then. So keep me posted, and I would love to support the idea any, t any, any chance I can, Steve. I think that's great because the airbrush artists out there, especially those who are beginning, it, I always want them to get the resources. And it pains me when people say, Tim, I love your channel. I just wish I, I known it was there, you know, all these years. And so if it's a way to get exposure to different ways that will help them learn and speed up that process, that would be just amazing, you know. So that's very, very exciting. Uh, so, so we have a good discussion on the on uh, nameless subscribers thing about candies. I do like candies, uh, but the candies I like usually cause cavities. So that's the candies I work with. But uh, it's fascinating. That, you know, on a serious note, uh, how candies work. They're like very thin, and they're like dyes and everything. So I find that very, very interesting. And we'll just continue working on the big shapes here. And you know, we did work on some small shapes too. But we're just sketching right now. Just sketching. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfect at this stage. And if it does look good, hey, that's icing on the cake, right? Of course, you want to try and make it as good as possible. You don't want to be sloppy, right? You, your goal is to make it look beautiful at every stage. But when painting a beautiful woman, it's not that difficult to make it beautiful at every stage. So I'm putting it out there. You know, people say when you put it out there, I'm putting it out there. One day I'm going to be painting somebody of, of note, like, you know, this amazing person, you know, Anya Taylor Joy. And she's going to see this live stream and then she's going to come the next week and she's going to be like saying, hey, um, this is me. And that would be just amazing, wouldn't that? So I'm putting it out there. And I'm just going to declare that's going to happen one of these days. So who's, who's having a, uh, who's leaving? John Diekman, thank you so much all the way from Wisconsin. Great to see you. And uh, you almost won today. So sorry you didn't win. But next week, so this is what I'm going to do. Next week, if you email me, paintedglyphs at gmail.com, you'll be in the running for some black beard wheat and an aggressive eraser that you can no longer purchase in stores. So that's going to be like a, like a $10 value. So that's going to be great. So definitely email me. Just say, hey, Tim, I'm, I'm interested in getting the, the uh, Blackbeard Wheat. And I'll put you in the running. So it's just fun, you know. And we'll do the Wheel of Names because I know everybody loved the Wheel of Names as much as I did, right? So, you know. somewhere. Where did the Wheel of Names go? Here we go. Let me see if I could see the Wheel of Names. There it is. That's the Wheel of Names. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be uh, posting the Wheel of Names. It's going to be exciting. And so uh, email me and you'll be on the wheel. So that's, that's very cool.
there's a dark in between the index finger. Now, if you're ever spraying and you're not getting uh, the air correctly, uh, don't continue looking for it, you know, bending back. Just do a quick test, make sure everything is fine, and do a test on a separate sheet of paper. Maybe you have to increase your air or something, but don't keep pulling back like, um, where's the air? Psh! And then it's kind of tragic. So you don't want that to happen. So definitely, when you're not getting air, stop, assess, and go from there. And let's see how this, uh, it's hot as lava, but let me see how this uh, tea tastes. Okay, third degree burn on my upper lip, no problem, but the tea tastes great, so that's good. <laughs> Dr. Steve's <laughs> tragedy. Yes, it does happen. It happens to the best of us. It happens to myself as well, sir. And so definitely, Steve, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe I pulled back until I just like oblivion. I'm going to try sculpting these hands a little bit. These hands. Yes, exactly, Todd. Work more with that arrow. Uh, it will, the more you work with it, the more it will be your friend. And the more you would definitely. So, I have several people out there who have purchased the uh, Extreme Patriot Arrow, the customized version. And they barely touch their, their eye waters anymore. And that's just not me bragging. That's just stating a fact from what they, what they tell me. It's like they never touch it anymore. And so it's not just that it gets as much detail, but it just feels better in the hand. Uh, it's well balanced, and uh, there's less less things that go wrong, I think, with this airbrush. Once you have it tuned up, it's just really just becomes part of you. So Brad <laughs> says that was his ex-wife's name. So, what was your ex-wife's name? So, that I want to hear. Yes, the Mac valve, definitely. Uh, you want to definitely uh, master this pack valve. Once you do, you won't be sorry. It really is wonderful, once you get that down. And there's a learning curve with everything, right, my friend? I'm just going to get the tiniest of details here. And then here, this dark right here. Under the pinky. There we go. So we're just sculpting the... See, so even with the hand, we're sculpting the larger shapes, the darker, the darks and everything. You know? And, oh, Tragedy. That's, that's a rough name. Boy, that's like... Imagine going through the name Tragedy. Oh my goodness. That would be rough. That's unfair. There we go. And so we see we have some nice darks on the back of her hand. And this is where, you know, learning anatomy is always great when you're working with hands. So you just have a basic understanding of what's happening and that's always good. So let's come over here. Maybe I can lighten it a bit with the aperture. There we go. That looks good. Okay. So yeah, by like 10 minutes left in the, uh, in the live stream, the lighting is going to be perfect. <laughs> oh boy. Perpendicular and not parallel. Remember when we're using the free hand shield. And raise that air pressure a little bit. When you're doing larger areas that are not so tight and detailed, you just raise that air pressure, increase your distance, and then you find that sweet spot. And that all takes time, you know, just like anything. You have a new car, 
you know, or for me, a car that's new to me, I never had a new car, but I had cars that were new to me. You always have to get used to them, right? You have to get used to, you know, all little idiosyncrasies of that particular car. And same thing with the airbrush, you know, you want to, each airbrush is going to be different, each brand. And so each brand and model of the airbrushes are pretty similar, but, uh, Steve Leahy, I think you agree that even if you have the same model and make of an airbrush, each has its own little quirks, don't they, uh, Steve? Right? Speaking of Mac valve, uh, Nail Subscriber ordered one the other day, accidentally opened it too far, and it popped off. So you did not, then the, the uh, valve part popped off. Couldn't get it to seal back on. Any Anybody know what kind of stick lube now, we're not talking about, so what brand is it? That's the first thing. Uh, if it was my Extreme Patriot Arrow, a customized version, that's an easy fix. But what brand was it? Was it Iwata? Was it uh, off-brand? Yes, so definitely. So Steve Leahy says, which I do agree, as you break in that airbrush, if you treat it well, you know, of course, if you don't treat the airbrush well, it's, it's just going to fight you tooth and nail. But... If you treat the airbrush well, it becomes so broken into how you paint, and it's just wonderful. But it's all maintenance, right? It's all like you have to really keep up with it. And we all have that airbrush we use every day, like the workhorse, right? You know, what's your workhorse? Everyone knows my workhorse is, of course, this airbrush, this exact one. This is the one that uh, Ken... Uh, the head of Badger actually handed to me uh, to try out. And of course, I since then I customized it, but this is basically the uh, DNA of the one that I used, which is great, you know? So yeah, we all have our favorite airbrush. So everyone out there, what is your absolute favorite airbrush that you use at least 60% of the time? And, you know, it doesn't matter what brand or anything, just what's your go-to airbrush out there? Oh, point zero airbrush. Okay, that's one of those off-brands. So a lot of times when you have the off-brand, uh, you know, when they come apart, that's pretty much it. So you might have to purchase another one, uh, unfortunately. Oh, so Brad is the Extreme Patriot Arrow, so that's good to hear. And uh, so whatever one you just pick up. I know Mr. Leahy, he likes, uh, I believe, the small cup on the Iwata Custom Micron series, right? And Willie likes the Sotar 2020. Is that the Sotar Slim, uh, Willie? Because that's a beautiful airbrush. The Sotar Slim 2020. I love that myself. Uh, that's a fun airbrush. Uh, right now, it's the Cheap Old Master airbrush. Gravity feed. Very cool. Airtop says, Tim, uh, did my mug scare you? I want a Eclipse bottle and... Oh, no, you're, you're, you're a great-looking guy, Mr. Todd. How do you say you're... Your mug could scare anybody. That's beyond me. And so we have so great. So Air Todd, he likes the Eclipse, the bottom feed, and the gravity feed. Chris Garcia likes the Grex. And uh, Willie likes the 2020 Slim. Oh, that's a beautiful airbrush, isn't it? It's just it's like working with a mechanical pencil. And Mr. Steve Lay, he says he does like the Micron B. Yes, that's the one for the inks but puts in more hours with the Micron C. Is that the C plus that has the Mac valve? That came later. You might have the older version. Yeah, those are great airbrushes. Thank you for sharing that with me. You know, so Mr. Garcia loves the Grex. Grex has some really nice airbrushes, I have to say. And Mr. Brian over at Grex, what a nice guy. He's such a great ambassador to Grex, isn't he? Uh, really like, really like Mr. Uh, Mr. Brian over there. Brian Dunbar. 
Oh, Raul, the old Limpo, Limpos. Oh, that's old school, right? Look at that. World Exploration says the 0 0.23. Yes, that the 0 0.23. That is the CM-C plus. Am I right? Uh, World Exploration, thanks for sharing that. Oh, I love hearing what you all are painting with. Yes, that would be great. Wouldn't that if the Sotar Slim had a pack valve? That would really be, you know, that would be a kick, a kick butt airbrush. Uh, so Steve uh, Leahy says, no, just a plain old C, no Mac valve. I do use the fan cap Grex. Oh, that's, I've seen you use that. Very cool. And uh, Air Todd says, Tim, I was asking about my pick. I said, yeah, no, that pick was cool. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Steve Steve says the Pache Turbo Airbrush. Yeah, that thing sounds like an A10 Warthog, doesn't it? When that takes off. That's a cool airbrush. I have it, but I never even tried it. It's more like a collector's item. Uh, yeah, that's funny. And yes, oh man, that is great. You know what? I'm going to make sure, Willie, I'm going to start the ball rolling on that, you know, because that's a great idea, Willie. Uh, so definitely. Nail Scarves, does anyone know where you can find a decent cheap airbrush? I think there's a decent cheap airbrush out there, an inexpensive airbrush. I wonder what airbrush it could be. Hmm. Kind of looks like this one. Uh, kind of. Oh, it is this one. So 149. This is the best airbrush you're going to get, in my opinion, for your 149. So if you're in the market for a new airbrush, give me a shot. I guarantee I'll make you love it. And um, so definitely, this is uh, this feels good in your hand. It has a finger rest here that I adjust. It's just beautiful. Oh, yeah, so uh, Steve says is that the, uh, the turbo uh, is, is, <laughs> is rough to use. Uh, made you give up after, oh, I understand. And yes, I got you, I made sure you purchased the Arrow and the Sotar. Exactly, those are beautiful airbrushes. And yeah, so yeah, if you were just working with that turbo, oh my goodness, that's like, that's like learning how to drive with a Ferrari Testarossa, you know? It's just not good. Uh, Brad says, I agree with Tim getting insane detail with the Extreme Patriot Arrow and the inks. It just works together. World Exploration says the Pache Vision has air leaks. Oh no! I'm sorry to hear that. So are there ways to fix those air leaks there? Uh, World Exploration, I hope so. I always have that never say die attitude when it comes to airbrushes, you know, you know, like that old commercial uh, where, you know, he's trying to get this big part inside a car. I think it was a Meineke commercial. And he says, how is that going to fit in my car? And he has a hammer and he goes, we'll make it fit, you know, so that's kind of funny. So I like taking with airbrushes and then I basically came up with this one, which is really cool. And... Oh, thanks, Brad. Have a great night, my friend. Always a pleasure. And Steve says he had an old cheapo Iwata with a cup at the bottom, bottom feet, and didn't like it. It was probably more for t-shirts, very true. And had no clue I was doing... Yeah, you know, those bottom feet airbrushes are rough, you know, because you need so much air pressure to, to really make them work. So it was a, this was the windy, rainy... Tornado warning version of the live stream tonight. <laughs> but we got it through, right? And we, we made good progress, you know. It's looking like Miss Anya Taylor-Joy, right? So we're doing good, and we're going to come back with some some stencils to, you know, masking out the, 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 uh, mask out the shirt. We'll mask out the chest piece. And we'll really, you know, ramp this up for next week, you know. And yes, no power failures, though it was touch and go for a while, Steve. So guys, it's 11.30. Don't forget, paintedglyphs at gmail.com for next week's running of Blackbeard Wheat. And uh, one of these uh, really great erasers that you can't buy in stores. 
And so we will be in the running with the Wheel of Names. The Wheel of Names. Love the Wheel of Names. I don't know why I like it so much, but I do. So thank you so much, Willie. Congratulations for the cup. It's going to be Willie on there. And I hope everyone has a great night. And thank you so much, guys. You are the greatest. You really are.